Hi everyone, my name is Johnny Romes. I'm a full-time freelance content creator based in Utah, and this is my one-year review of the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Over the last year, I've gone through many changes in my own personal life, from working part-time at a hospital and juggling freelance content creation, to being overworked as a full-time videographer and photographer at a company that was in absolute shambles, to then going all in as a full-time freelance content creator. The last 12 months have been an absolute whirlwind, but the one thing that remained constant is my appreciation for the MacBook Pro that was released in 2021. All right, so as the title of this video suggests, this is my one-year review of the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I have done a few videos over the last year. I originally bought the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. It didn't really sit right with me with the size. And when I switched it for the 14 inch, I just fell in love with it and felt that it suited my needs perfectly. So although this video is about the 14 inch MacBook Pro, obviously the size difference is more of a use case basis. So you may prefer the 16 inch rather than the 14 inch, but my general thoughts in this review can be applied to both sizes because the specifications can be matched with the 14 and the 16 inch. On the topic of specifications, I wanna go over quickly what I have in mind. So I have the base plus, I like to call it 14 inch MacBook Pro. So it has 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD hard drive space, a 10 core CPU and the 16 core GPU. I opted for this because I felt that was the best way that I could spread my money out the furthest, if that makes sense. I went with 16 gigabytes of RAM, although it is the lowest, I have tried out 32 gig and I generally didn't see too much of a difference. Obviously upgrading the storage is kind of a no brainer because you can essentially store more files and bring less hard drives when you're traveling. But also there is memory swapping in these laptops, which means it will borrow temporarily some of the storage in the hard drive and help lift the RAM when it's under a lot of pressure. So the larger hard drive you have, then the longer it will last essentially. And I think when you go with the one terabyte hard drive, it comes with those extra two cores in the CPU and the GPU. And I didn't really wanna go for the full base of the 14 inch, because like I said, originally when they came out, I bought the 16 inch base model, which had the 10 core CPU and the 16 core GPU. And I didn't really wanna downgrade from that. Although I don't think the performance would have been too much different, but I just didn't wanna go lower than what I had begun with. So that's the specifications of what I had and a little bit more background. Like I said, I did have the 16 for a little bit with the exact same specifications, but for a period of a few months, I had both the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the base model Max Studio. Now that comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM and the M1 Max processor. And in reality, I didn't really see much of a difference in terms of performance between those two, which is why I think the M1 Pro chip is probably the best bang for buck for pretty much any content creation out there, whether it be photo or video. If you're doing intensive rendering, then you may wanna go with the M1 Max chip. But as I mentioned for myself, editing 4K video, landscape photos, working in Photoshop, Lightroom and Premiere Pro, I didn't see any difference really from the Max chip to the Pro chip. And essentially the money that you save can be spent elsewhere in either upgrading the RAM, the hard drive space, or kitting out an office if you wanted to work at an office and you're not traveling as much, you can put that money into a monitor or other peripherals. At the time of release, these laptops started at $2,000 and the model that I have right now started at $2,500. For the most part, prices haven't changed. However, for the last couple of months, Best Buy have been running a promotion of around $400 off, which, doesn't really make much sense to me because Apple doesn't have that promotion, but I just wanted to share that just in case you are in the market of one of these laptops. Maybe Best Buy is preparing for an announcement that we might see in the next month of the M2 chip MacBook Pros. But with that $400 price saving, these are even more better value for money. I did put out a video earlier this year covering in depth why I went from the 16 inch to the 14 inch. But just to kind of summarize, the bottom line was I often find myself editing in my office as much as I am editing on the road and just having a slightly smaller footprint in my desk setup made a huge difference. Obviously it's a very personal thing, but that's pretty much why I went with the 14 inch in the end, because it just made my life a little bit less cluttered. The 16 inch is really big. Although it's only a two inch difference, that footprint was significant for me whether I'm working here or whether I'm working on the road. It's really hard to explain, but as I mentioned, it's something that was personal to me. So I definitely recommend going to the Apple store if you're looking between the two different sizes and picking one up, seeing how you feel with that size and with that footprint that it essentially takes up. In terms of performance, it has been an incredible year of efficiency for me. <laughs> I talked about this 
when I got my hands on it for the very first time. And obviously, you know, the hype is real. You just got this brand new product. You spent a ton of money on it. So you kind of want to make yourself feel like it was worth the value. So you keep saying over and over again, yeah, it's great. The performance is fantastic. But now that honeymoon period is over, it's one year later, I'm confident to say the exact same thing. These laptops are absolutely phenomenal. The M1 Pro chip is just incredibly efficient for editing video and photo. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a full-time content creator and I do video and photo work for a variety of different companies. I have a few that I work with on a regular basis and I'm often making short form video for them. And this takes the effort out of the editing. I can literally pour all of my effort into drafting up scripts, planning, shooting, executing everything out in the field. And then when I come back to the office or if I'm editing on the road, it's just import and go. There's no pre-rendering required for the 422 10-bit video that I'm working with. It scrubs flawlessly. And the only time that I've really found it slow down is when I add in essential graphics. So a few months ago, one of my most favorite creators, Tom Noski, came out with this typewriter graphic. And I absolutely love it for my short form content and my personal channels. And that's the only time when it can sometimes slow down, depending on how much text I'm putting in, that's when I think that it kind of hits its limit. Um, but it's nothing that a pre-render can't fix. And in reality, it doesn't slow it down to the point where it's unbearable. I just notice that it's making the processor work a little bit harder. And that's pretty much the only thing that I've found to slow this machine down. It's the same with some callouts and just any kind of graphic. And like I said, if you are into graphic design or you're working with a lot of 3D rendering, the M1 Max chip may be more beneficial for you. But in terms of everything else, it's performed absolutely flawlessly. It renders video really quickly and I don't even hear the fans come on even when rendering. It stays really cool to the touch as well. So the thermals in here are really good. One of my most favorite things about these MacBook Pros is the Pro XDR display. The color accuracy is absolutely phenomenal. And let's face it, most people are viewing content on an Apple device, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad. So the continuity between those two displays is perfect. Although I love my Asus display behind me, I often find there is just a slight difference in color and contrast that I just haven't been able to nail between the two, which is definitely making me want to maybe pick up the Apple Studio display eventually and replace this Asus with that display because I absolutely love the Pro XDR display of the MacBook Pro. And when I'm in the office, although this is a lot smaller than my Asus display, I often find myself pulling over my video and photo editing work just to double check things. Obviously, if I did invest in a color calibrator for the Asus, I could probably get it pretty similar, but having that display already built into this laptop is fantastic, especially when I'm on the road, you know, I don't have to worry about any color discrepancies when I'm editing content. And then obviously everyone has talked about this. This was the biggest hype about these new MacBook Pros and that is the ports that they reintroduced back. They are truly laptops for creators. We have three USB-C ports, probably Thunderbolt as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I just use them for USB-C. We have the 3.5 mil jack. We have the MagSafe charging back an HDMI port, and of course, the absolutely amazing SD card reader, which is just, you know, it's kind of a no brainer for content creators. So the fact that it has those is just amazing for particularly when I'm on the road. When I'm at home, I do have the CalDigit dock that I plug into that gives me my display and an extra SD card slot and then some other peripherals that I use. But in terms of what it offers on the device itself, is pretty much all you need. In terms of battery life, I've been pretty impressed. The 16 inch did have a little bit of an edge because the battery is larger than the one in the 14 inch. But in reality, even when I'm traveling on the road, I often find myself having power, whether I'm at a coffee shop and I do have external power options with solar panels with my overlanding setup in my Jeep. So I'm not often finding myself just needing the battery for a long period of time. So it's not really something that I can talk to with enough weight behind it. So I'll definitely look at other videos if you want to see how true battery life performance is between the 16 and the 14 inch pro. But like I said, for my use, I haven't noticed it to be an issue. All right, so that pretty much sums up my one year review of the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Pretty excited to see if we're going to have an M2 MacBook Pro announcement in the next month. I probably won't be picking it up because 
um, this has just ticked all the boxes for me. So unless it has something absolutely wild that I can't foresee, maybe it's got like three SD card slots, but who would need that, right? Um, I'm probably not gonna be picking it up. And in reality, we may see an even further price drop with the M1 Pro MacBook Pros and the M1 Max MacBook Pros if we have an M2 in the near future. I'm not sure how they compare on paper, to be honest. I'm not really paying much attention to that M2 lineup. They might be introducing an M2 Pro, um, but in reality, this is probably the best bang for buck going into 2023 uh, for content creators. So yeah, like I said, that's it for the review. Thanks for tuning in. If there's something I didn't cover that you wanted to know about these laptops, feel free to just drop a comment down below or reach out to me on Instagram at jromes.tech and at johnnyromes, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, I'll see you later.